Okay, fantastic. All right, then. so before we begin, are you guys ready? Sorry for the delay, first of all. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, my app is updating and my airport is not connecting my net. It's slow, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, so, uh, hope everyone can understand. All right, so without further delay, let me start the class. Okay, so before we start the class, let me briefly introduce myself. All right. So, yeah, I'm starting a slideshow. Yes. Is anyone want to ask anything? All right. Okay. So, my name is Kani Salon. I'm actually a professional software developer. I develop uh, mobile apps and uh, uh, websites and all that. So, currently, I'm developing the websites for an airline company. All right. So, I actually have more than four years experience in web and mobile app development. So basically, I'm a full stack developer. So I have knowledge. I'm actually quite an expert in React, React Native, especially in JavaScript and also Android. All right. So these are some of my uh, details like uh, where I've graduated, working, and uh, I'm also a part time. Uh, I'm actually patient about teaching. So I'm actually being a part time teacher here and there. All right. So today, what we're going to cover, that's what, but I think someone is uh, unmute. So can you guys please make sure your mics are mute? I think someone is mute. Can I help me to mute the person? Okay, thanks. All right. So what we're going to cover today is HTML and CSS basically for now, for this, this week, all right? So uh, let me clear our objectives, all right? So our objective today is actually, you're gonna learn the basics, all right? Basics is really important. It's like a basement, okay? Enough. And you want to build a house, the basement should be really strong, right? It should be firm. Only then you can withstand. So same goes here, you have to make sure basic is really firm, so that when you learn the advanced, concepts even if you move to like react and all that later on so it will be much easier for you to understand the concepts all right so today basically i'm going to cover on like uh, you should be able to differentiate between html css uh, for this week and later on you will be learning javascript so you should be able to differentiate all these three and how to use this three together for me. so with a further delay uh, let me ask how many of you have already attended my previous classes that uh, conducted HTML, CSS, basics before, even JavaScript? Is everybody new yet? Or have attended the class before? Come on, in yes means you type in the chat. Okay, let's have some blue interactions. Okay, you are new here. You have not attended my classes before, no problem. All right, so let's let me start recording. Okay, class, if you are ready, okay, if you're ready, you type 666. 666 means thumbs up, guys. All right, so type 666. We're gonna start our class officially. All right, let's see how many of you are excited to start the class. All right, great. So, first of all, do you know what is website? I mean, I think most of you knows what is website, but uh, but let me briefly explain. That is basically a collection of web pages, okay, that are hosted on web server. Web server is basically more like uh, you can say like a hard disk. Hard disk can be accessed by everyone through internet. All right. So basically, how do we access to certain uh, website is by typing the URL. All right. So for example, here in the slide, you can see that www.learncomputerscienceonline.com and it will request for the web page. The internet will request for the web page and then it goes through all this process and finally it finds the, the browser, uh, sorry, the file, the website that you requested for and it renders on the web page. What you are seeing on the web, on your Google browser or even in Safari or whatever is the front end. Okay, whenever you type something, when you click something, when you interact with the uh, uh, 
left side it maybe is using the backend as well right so this is roughly what how website works it's really important because uh, you should know what is front end and back end front end is basically from not basically a ui la. and it's not it's not that you're going to design the ui basically you have to translate the ui into codes and also make make sure it's functional all right so <clears throat> there are two types of website basically the first one is static websites the second one is dynamic website static means a website which you can just read, scroll something like that basically you can't interact with the website you can just get the details like a book okay so for example like wikipedia and then uh, a few others like blogs and all that you can just read right all right so that's a static website dynamic website basically in i think currently 90 percent of the websites are dynamics like webs, uh, Facebook, like you know, uh, even now we are using Discord, right? All these are dynamic. Dynamic means you can interact with the website, you can submit form, you can actually uh, request something, okay? you can make orders, and all that. Okay, so far, is it clear, guys? Is there any issues with my mic or is everyone okay? Uh, you can type one, one, one if you're okay you can't see the slides anymore oh okay sorry so uh, Arisha okay Are you able to see the slide now All right, everyone can see the slide now. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so basically what I was explaining is that what is website and how website works, okay? And then there are two types of website, which is static and dynamic. Static means you can, it's fixed, the content is fixed, you can just read it. Uh, you can just get the content, that's all. Dynamic is some website that you can interact with, for example, like Shopee, Lazada, you can buy, uh, you can submit forms, and so on. All right. So, the so first, let's differentiate, let's, let's understand what is HTML and CSS. Okay. Basically, HTML is a language, uh, it's a markup language. All right. So, it's, it's basically the, to describe the structure of web pages and CSS is basically for the presentation for the styles. All right. So you can see here the basic concept between HTML and CSS is we have bones, right? Skeleton. Okay. This is basically structure which says where is the head, where is the hands, okay, and where is the legs, foot, knees, and all that. Okay. Well, the CSS is basically our skin our hair okay and then we can uh, our clothes and all that so basically css is for styling the html is where we uh, set the structure of the website without the structure we can't do the styling for example if you want to build a house okay you need a structure only then once you build the structure only then you fix doors you you paint it and all that even you buy so far or whatever okay so that's the concept so this is an example of html structure so you should have this doc type and this is the open and closing attacks okay this is the height and body so no worries later we'll go in detail this is just an example differentiate between html and yes so this is a basic example of html structure and this is some examples of css I think someone has unmuted. So can you please mute your mic. Yeah, it's interrupting. All right. So there are three types of CSS basically for your information, right? Which is inline, internal CSS, and external CSS. You don't need to memorize it. And uh, I'm sure when you're seeing this for the first time, if anyone is seeing this for the first time, you might be wondering what is all this. Okay, might you might even feel like complicated. No. 
when you start to when you start learning later on you can really understand well all right so let's start with html all right in html we have elements all right just now we saw a lot of tags right see here just now we saw a lot of tags like doctor html html then you can see name html at the bottom then you can see the hate in here all these are elements okay 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 so there are three types of css basically so which is in like internet oh, sorry sorry so this is html elements all right so when you write an html element you need you should have a open tag and closing tag okay so open tag and closing tag means it says that something is beginning here and it's ending here all right so um, actually there are many element html elements but however we just gonna learn the most important the most common that you regularly would use but others actually no need to memorize all these elements when you start doing a lot of projects we automatically you can memorize it all right so we just master the basics of the most important one then slowly when you do more projects you can explore more all right so basically if you want to write the you want to begin the html all right you should first write the structure the basic structure this is the top type html okay i'm uh, excuse me sorry uh i'm not sure i keep getting a lot of noise i don't know why uh anyone on mute it's actually interrupting that's why all right so let's understand what is all these type elements are the first this is basically the first structure okay later on you will write a lot more all right this is the most basic one okay so the first one is doc type basically you are telling the google browser not google, only google browser any browsers okay that this file is the html document type okay second is the root element so this is where the html code begins all right inside this html course you can see between this html open and closing that we have eight and also body okay so inside this eight we have title it is the where you contains all the website information for example the title and also you like you know if have you heard about meta text before anyone so you, if you know what is meta text meta text is basically uh, it's a lot of uh, information about the website for example if you heard about search engine optimization and all that 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 requires meta text to identify what this website contains okay later on i will show some of the meta text okay so no worries later we will be doing the codes together so inside the head we have title we'll have a meta tag and we will also import like a, a css css and a javascript and all that and inside this body is where the content of the page whatever you are seeing in this website is written inside this body okay this is the one that is visible inside whatever inside this head is not visible right? okay one is uh, unmuted please mute yourself thank you all right the first header okay i think before i introduce the headings let's let me show you how to write the html structure that's why i already explained the theory but right let me explain now on how to write the one second why i'm keep getting why is this We share my Visual Studio Code. I believe everyone has Visual Studio Code, yeah. Okay, Visual Studio Code is basically uh, everyone can see my Visual Studio Code. Okay, great. 
All right. So Visual Studio Code is where it's called as the IDE, okay, where we uh, write our codes. We can basically there's a lot, okay. The most popular one is, is Visual Studio Code. All right. So first, we need to create the HTML file. Okay, you should remember that for writing HTML, we use HTML file. To write CSS, we use a separate file. Okay, there are three ways of writing, as I mentioned earlier, right? Inline and uh, uh, you know, others. Okay, so the <clears throat> so to write the HTML first, we begin with the, let's create the HTML file. All right, so. Let me just randomly name it as index.html. This is a, a usual practice of writing that index.html or home.html for the first page. So, if you want to start writing the HTML structure, first you need the doc type. Okay, so the doc type. So, this is the doc type HTML structure. First type. Only for this doc type, okay, some elements does not require closing type. One of the examples is this doc type. Okay, the second one is it. Uh, sorry, HTML. Basically, we are saying that this is where the HTML code begins. So for the HTML, we have open and closing tags. Everyone can see my code, right? Or it's too small. Is it too small or visible? Hello? If the code is too small or just fine huh? all right fantastic all right so inside this html we have head and body just as look like our how our our stuff we have a head and also a body right same goes here right head and body so we have head and body all right inside this a is where you this is common yeah so if you want to uh, type this common uh, you can just use a shortcut where if you're using MacBook, you can press command and slash. Okay. If you are using a, a Windows, you can click a control slash to get this command. Basically, this command is not visible in any of your websites, it's only for developers to uh, like a notes for a developers. Like. All right. So, this is basically it is where it contains. Uh, uh, website details okay, like informations all right so inside this website we have title okay, before let me let me show you it preview okay and inside this body we have the uh, content of the website okay. you see here uh, this is the structure basically so when you write a structure, you nothing is shown here because we haven't started writing the content for the website. So first, inside the head, we have title. All right, title. Okay, title is basically uh, uh, shown at the tab here. So usually in the websites, uh, we have tabs, right? The top when you use browsers. So this is the. Uh, uh, title when you write something in the title it will be shown here so for example i have to name this as uh, uh html css okay so you can see html css all right okay so now let's try something in the body so maybe on the right uh Header, okay. This is H1 heading one. Okay, Let, uh, later I'll explain to you what is uh, H1, H2, H3, and all that. Okay. So let me write a uh, hello world. So, did you see when I write uh, something here? Okay, it's not shown inside the website. I uh, just ignore this part. Okay, this is a special case. When you write in the head just for title, you can see on the top of the tab. But other contents like meta tags and all that it's not uh, shown here so later i will uh, explain what meta for now we just ignore it all right so whatever you write inside this body will be shown inside this inside the back i mean you can see it 
Okay, when you access to the website, for example, you can just pre tag. This is paragraph tag, so I can type something, it is shown. But let's say if I do the same thing with the hit, I cut and paste it here. Okay, okay, basically, uh, this is just maybe this is a bit advanced, so it's able to show, but actually, when you write something inside the hit, it is not shown. All right, I wonder how it, this is shown. Right. One second, I'm undoing. All right, so let's continue with our slide. Okay, let me introduce to you some of the elements, HTML elements. All right, so the first element is headings. Heading means title, headers, okay, as usual. All right. But it has few sizes, H1 till H6. Okay. H1 is the most biggest header. All right. And it when the number increases, the size is becomes smaller. Okay, so H1 is the most big one. H2, H3, H4, H5. There is no H7, H8, huh? we up to six. All right. And we have paragraphs. Okay, paragraphs is basically uh you know to write a long descriptions and to write some contents use paragraph so for paragraph you have open and closing text okay like this like shown in this uh slide all right and then let me and then we have break line okay so break line is uh you know right uh when you write a long for example long sentence okay for example you can see in this slide right i'm writing uh two lines basically here in the code hello world i'm studying I'm study tonight. All right, but the output is in a straight line. So how do we make it two sentences as in this code? So we use a break line. Break line means move to the second line. Okay, let's try. Okay, let me show you the example. I better share the old screen. Much better. Okay. Everyone can see my uh, Visual Studio Code now. Can see my Visual Studio Code. Yes, sir. All right. Great. Okay. So, as I mentioned just now, for heading, we have six sizes. Okay. Let's try one by one. So H1, open and then close it. Okay. Then in between these two tags, you can write the content maybe, right? Header one. All right. Now I copy this and just change it now. Two. This is header two. Then I close it with header two. What will happen if you close it with header one? My God, I have some autocorrects. Okay. Okay, sorry, I have some plugins that auto corrects it. Okay, so usually when you write it, and maybe if you open it to one and then you close it with two, it will show an error. Okay, so make sure you open H2 and then close it with H2. All right, so hey, this is H2. Then let's try H3. Uh, okay. H3, then try with oh, maybe. Okay. Four and five. Okay, then final one six. Okay, let's try seven. Okay, let's try. Can you see there is no seven? This is actually standard form. Okay, there is no seven. Let's try eight if you want. There is no eight. Okay, this is standard form. So there's only from one to six. Okay, and you can see the difference, right? H1 is the biggest and uh, it decreases when the number increases. All right, so let's stick to H1 for now. Okay, maybe uh, we try to create a simple website. Maybe uh, uh, we can write about maybe my favorite food. Okay, my favorite food. All right, so now I have to write. Briefly, 
got my favorite food so i want to explain so what we can use this p tag paragraph tag so let's say i am from malaysia okay p f ID various kinds of foods food and my most my most favorite food is what maybe uh in Akshikapala right we see here uh, I've written a long sentence what if I make it to two simple sentences okay now in our code it looks like two sentences right but then okay but then in our website it's still in in, in the one actually in the same line all right you can see here we have various kinds of food right this is maybe we can make it three sentences okay i have three sentences here but in our website we only have like two lines all right so this is where use break lines okay if you put a break line here break line is a special case it doesn't have a closing tag huh? so it doesn't need a closing tag so you see when i put this break line it breaks into it moves to this next slide it's basically moving to the next slide let's say if i put a break line in between this words okay it's broken into two lines so this is the uh, three elements so far we have learned any questions guys so far any questions okay, feel free to ask if you have any questions anyone if you feel everything is good you can type three 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 is basically love that means is everything is good so far if you have any questions get us you guys i give you like 30 seconds if some one is typing let's wait okay cool so let's continue all right so the next element that i like to introduce is a diff diff is basically like a container it's actually used for grouping up some few elements together for example okay you can see in this example we have a diff okay and then we have uh for for this moment just ignore what is class and all that okay just look at this uh element name okay diff and then this h2 and p basically what they are doing is they are grouping this h2 this h2 and p tag together into one container what's the use of container basically we use we use a container to store multiple things right same goes here division like okay, div is actually to use to group few elements together so in our case just now we already done with h1 and p this one old set right we can make it to one container so you can type div okay and close it okay so you can see that we have a division here okay open and closing that inside the division we have h1 and paragraph all right so okay just now we saw in we saw we we saw here at yeah, classes right class class means basically uh basically we have it's in like giving a name for this diff. okay basically like giving a name for the division so we can name it as class okay class is like name so we can name it as container one you can put any names as you like but make sure it's something relevant now so that others also can understand what is this all right so what's the use of this class is you can it will be very useful especially when you started writing css or javascript because so that we can uh, let's say if you want to make this division background color is yellow 
So it's very easy when you're writing CSS that we can choose this name and then you can change the background color to yellow. Because sometimes you may have multiple divisions like this. Maybe you can have container two. Okay. So if we put everything at container one, then ever all the all this background will be changed to yellow. Alright. So it's better to name it differently. Okay, there's also ID. You can also use ID instead of classes. Okay, but what's the difference between class and ID is ID is unique, like our IC number. Each person has a unique numbers, right? For IC in IC. IC is unique numbers for each individual. Alright. But class is like our name. Maybe the same name. Uh maybe a person a person is called as uh maybe uh uh Iman. Okay, Iman. Maybe there's, there can be another person called as Iman as well. But they both can't have same uh, IC number, right? Obviously, it will be unique, right? So, ID is unique. Class is reusable. Maybe both can have, can have same class name, but they can't have same ID name. Okay? Are you very clear about this ID and classes? Usually people get confused with this ID and also class. And for both, you can use class ID and classes. But that, that, that's a very rare case. Right? So maybe I want to name this as a container generally. Okay, but I name this as container one and container one. But you can have the same name here for the class. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Maybe you'll be wondering why we need to write all these ID classes. Okay, this is uh, will be very useful, especially when you've started writing CSS and JavaScript. So you'll, you'll see that in upcoming classes. All right. So let's continue with other elements. So before we understand, we already learned deep. Next is HTML list. HTML list has two types. One is, okay, unordered list unordered list like these bullet points okay ordered list means one two and three okay so let's write this list let's learn to write this list okay that's why i said uh, uh my favorite food is not even ordered on that right so let me remove this okay you want to clearly see the comment okay you want to understand this comment thing is See, once I commented this whole thing, it's not shown in the website. So it will the code is still there, but it is commented. That means it has become like a notes for the developer to go through, or sometimes you can test it by commenting whether this thing is working or not and all that. Alright. So for now we don't need this. Let's continue with the ordered and unordered list. So now I want to list down some food names. Okay. Maybe we can put another header, subheader. Okay, so if I use H2, it will be very close to H1. So I use triple H3. Okay, so I say as popular food in Malaysia. Things can everyone list down some foods, your favorite foods, maybe? Okay, let's list it down in our website. Come on, type your favorite food. What's your favorite food, guys? Come on, type it. Laksa, okay, nice. Others? What's your favorite food? What do you had for your dinner? Hey, curry, okay. Come on. Honey. Okay, fantastic. All right, all of my favorite food as well. Okay, so let's list down some. Okay, let's list down all this laksa, bikari, and biryani. Okay, we have two types of uh, ordering, right? So first, let's begin with unordered list. Okay, for unordered list, you need to use this tag. We have, for example, yes. For unordered list, we use ul tag. Okay, so we open and close this URL tag and then we list items inside 
in between this open and closing tab. Okay, basically, we are saying the browser that this is unordered list. Okay, so the browser will have started expecting unordered list and then we list down all the items. Okay, let's begin. So that you are open and closing tab. Okay, okay, inside this open and okay, you already open and close. Now we need to list down the item. So for list item, we tap and open and close text. Okay, our first item was black stuff. All right. So the second item is Mikari. All right. And the third one is Priyani. Okay, so this is how you list unordered list. Okay, you use you and how to make it as ordered list. Very, very simple. Just change this you to O. Oh, that's all. Now you can see that one, two, three. That's it. There's no any other differences. It's actually the, exactly the same, just that you change this to O. If you are unordered, you change it to Q. But make sure this open and closing and has the same name. Huh? Okay, that's all for listing. Any questions, guys? Any questions so far? Are you able to clearly understand how to use the elements, how to write the HTML structure? Okay, if you if you if you understand, you can type six six six. Okay, let me continue. All right, so now let's learn few more text, few more elements, which is links. Okay, the next one is links. Link is basically link. When you click the link, it will be directed to another page. All right, so let's try it. So first, before we begin, let me explain, explain two types of uh, URLs. The first one is absolute URL. The second one is relative URL. Okay, absolute URL is basically you need internet to access it. It's a uh, website or any URL that requires internet. Okay, for your easy understanding. The relative URL means local pages. In local pages local pages means sometimes in the in the same folder i mean over here in this html we can have another one another page maybe we call this as second page okay html so you may have something here okay maybe let me write okay the shortcut to write html structure using visual studio code okay this is a tips for you listen carefully just type this uh, what do you call that? Atrophy, I don't know. Mistaken. Okay, then enter. That's all. Okay, so this is the second page, right? Okay, make sure you save it. Then, that's not quite it. This is say we are saying that this HTML is written in English. Okay, and then now you can see here some methods. Okay. Meta text. Okay, this meta chart set is basically we are saying that uh, what types of uh, characters we use in this uh, document to write codes. So basically, we use whatever characters, symbols in this our keyboard, right? So just write it, this ETF dash eight. So the browser automatically knows. We use all these symbols and characters inside the keyboard. Okay, and then there's a second meta name viewport this is basically we are saying that uh this website is can be responsive so that is how you can see that we adapt this website can adapt okay can adapt to uh big screens small screens okay responsive websites okay so that is what is meant by viewport with all these things all right so let me change the other to second page okay so that let me write something here so maybe i can use h1 then i write this is second page okay absolute url is basically 
requires internet. So basically, you can just click on P or any URL for any website, then you paste it. Okay. But then uh, for the uh, relative URL, okay, for the relative URL, you like, for example, you want to click something here and then move to another page. Okay. So that is absolutely URL. Basically, internally you're changing. For example, if you're using some website, you may sometimes click about us, then you can change to maybe contact form and all of that, right? You're basically changing internally. So this, it, that could be an, uh, an absolute URL, okay? So no worries. Later, I'll show you as an example. Okay, let's try. Let's try to write these URLs. Okay, so let me make a URL below this PGI. Okay, this is impacts final, the first page, okay? So first you need to write A. A means attribute. Okay, so we are need to have A open and closing tag. You see here, basically I have open and closing tag. So I have open and closing tag. And then let me write something in between. Maybe I say uh click here. Click here. Okay. So you can see, but it's not clickable. So let's write. Okay. We call this as well. Let's write attributes first. We need to give HR. HREF means uh, basically give the URL or link. Okay, where you want to direct this. Uh, when you click here, where you want to go. All right. So let me type www dot google.com okay then save it now if i click this it directs me to google.com so maybe i open this maybe i open this file in browser okay so I click this. Maybe something is wrong. Wait, let me check. www. Okay, let me. It's a scan look. Try this. Okay, yeah. We need to put this HTTPS. All right. So when I click this, it directs me to the Google. Correct. All right, if you want to learn more attributes, you can actually go to this topic tree school so you can refer more. So basically, W3 school is like a dictionary. Okay, let's see the links for more examples. Huh? Okay, see here. All right, so, uh, okay. I'd like to explain about this, like, okay. Just now, we saw that when we click this link, it's opening in the same page. I mean, it's redirecting to Google, but in the same tab. Okay, this is the tab we are using for website right, right now. Okay, when I click this, it's redire redirecting to the new, I mean, to the link on the same tab. What if I want to open this link in a new tab? Okay. I'm going to open this to the new tab. You put continue on target equals, then you type underscore blank. Okay, so when you, when you put this target, okay, and then when you click this link, it will open in new tab. Can you see it? Our tab is still here, and it has opened in the new tab. Again, let me show you. Okay. I click here, it opens a new tab. By default, if you don't put this target, by default, it will be opening on same page. Let me see if this. See, it's opening on same page. If I put this target, it will open in. Wait, let me see. If Okay, so it's opening in the new tab. All right, if, if 
actually by default it will be opening the same tab right or else you can also write this way let's go self all right this is the most common the most common is underscore plan or else we don't use because uh by default it is already underscore self okay if you want to open the new tab you just make sure you put it underscore plan all right so you see underscore scale opens on the same sorry opens on the same page okay even if you don't put it by default it will be opening on the same tab but i prefer plan if you're opening outside uh, web, uh outside links okay external links all right this is you can call this as absolute or what if i want to create relative url i want to link to the second page okay because absolute url is something that he access to we need incorrect okay so if i want to write relative url well, the same thing same method just that we don't use this url we need to write the path of this page this file so you put dot since this is under same folder we just need to put dot slash so can you see the option here just choose the second page and then i want to open on the same page so this is not required if you want to write target should be fine you can just put self if you want to open on the same tab lah. so i can say click here to second page Uh, all right now we can see that here all right since this is in the same line even though it's written separately but oh yeah can you see it's in the same line right so let me put some break lines in between so it would be our safe now you can see that it's broken into the two lines if I want, if I want more gaps, we can add another one. So you can see there are some gaps. So now, it is okay. And now, when I click the second page, okay, it has changed to second page. Can you see this URL? Okay, it has changed to second page. Go back. Can you see this URL? index not html so when i click the second page it's opening the second page in the same tab if you want it to open in the new tab i guess now you can just change to blank so when i click the second page it opens in the next new tab all right so but i prefer to write a relative your stuff but actually you are used to black that's normal practice now but it depends on What's your requirement when developing the website? So far, is everybody clear? Come on, guys. If it's clear, you can type three to three. If you have any questions, you can ask me. A few more minutes to go, and I think we have like images. Then we are done already. So next week we'll be covering CSS, and also if possible, we'll be doing some a uh, small project. I'll be showing you some a small project next week. And also we'll explain CSS next week. Today we'll be focusing 100% on HTML. Do you have any questions guys so far? Come on. Okay, should I continue? Is there any other way to have larger line breaks instead of typing multiple br? Uh, it, there are there are many ways of doing that. Actually, uh, one of the ways is that we can use CSS to increase the cap and all that. Okay, we can learn that in the next class, if possible. And uh, other methods, uh, I'm not really sure because I use CSS to increase the cap. All right. So, but usually break line is not to have, uh, uh, not to basically say that to have, 
gaps in between the lines is basic just to move to the second line that's all okay so don't uh, miss interrupt okay i mean i don't uh, uh, misunderstand all right break line is basically just to move to second line don't increase the gaps and all that you can actually use css to increase so we have padding and margin to do that all right so you can explore about that in this css uh, you can go to this w3 school css then you can learn about this margins and paddings to increase the okay so no worries actually if you want to learn more about the elements whatever elements i'm teaching you today is like the most basics okay there's a lot more like tables and blah 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 you can see here right there's a lot okay so you can learn that by yourself if you want more more advanced classes you can request later okay so yeah some of the example like html forms and how you use videos and all that okay let's continue with our html images all right okay so let's say i want to add an image here some food image maybe so first so like same like break line these elements also special because it doesn't have closing tag okay not all elements have closing tag there are some special elements which doesn't require closing tag for example we have learned but a break line okay and then now image actually there's another one hr hr means horizontal line for example i want to separate this whole thing now we have to put hr hr is basically it doesn't require this slash to but so you see the straight line right you can see a straight line like let me add another one so this is they are lines right so these lines can be done by using this h hub okay so this doesn't require closing tag as well but uh, i have a plug this all this okay so let's continue so now we have to include an image right so before it okay before write the image element you should understand the attributes inside the uh inside the tag okay this first src beats source where are you getting the image from so it can be absolute url or relative you can be from online or from your load from your folder itself okay this is alternate alternative tags you can see the description here alt means alternative tags so alternative tags means if in case the image is not shown okay maybe due to internet issues or anything okay if in case not shown you can you can show these wordings so at least people have some will have some knowledge that this is uh, what this is the image is about at least uh, if the image is not uploaded all right and then we can hide just for sizing all right so let's try that yeah mg mg then this doesn't have a closing tag so first thing is src so let me try to take an image from online let's take some collision two pictures it just okay so maybe okay. okay let me just copy this uh, image address okay then see i just copy this image address then i paste it here okay then we can write this a r t alternate okay so right uh, this is what is this about food picture i'm mentioning food so for a short description about the image and then this two is a uh, this two alone is enough if we don't you are not conscious about the size. 
So you see, it's already shown. But it's too big, right? So maybe you want to select, decrease the size into smaller sizes and try with this bit. It means panjang, lebar. Okay. And uh, we can put the uh, we have to try but uh, so okay. okay pixel means a uh, unit okay uh, you need like centimeter meter kilometer and all that okay there are various units pixel you can even use percentage then you can also use a uh, vh blah 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 you can explore that later in uh, w3 schools or you can also search okay but the normal most common one is pixel uh. all right that height uh, maybe I put this as a 200 pixel. So let's try. Can you see here? But it's not good. Maybe we can try it. Can we get 600? No, oh, the height is too. So we can 400. Okay, it looks better. All right. So that's it. So this image is from online. Let's say I put a very wrong URL. I just edit this of this okay, now i'm sure the image can't be downloaded okay so can you see the image is not uh, unable to show because we have, we have written a long url or it can be because of it or whatever so it will show this alternative tag so can you see here it is showing the alternative tag okay that's why it's very important to write this alternate text. it's not even if it's forward right is read and height that's still fine you know because you can still do that in css you can still modify the sizes shapes of image to css but the most important one is the source okay if there's no source how to show an image obviously you cannot write and then this alternative text okay even you see if sometimes uh it could be a blind person who's using the website it can be there are some many blind people are using website as well so some they can't obviously they can't see the pictures right so when they put the cursor on the image it will read for them okay there's some software i'm not sure what it will read for them so it will read this alternative text like malaysian food something else okay so next is on how to use a uh, local file okay like this as i mentioned just now the source can be your from internet which is uh, absolute url or it can be relative url all right so this now i have to use this is actually absolute url now i have to use relative url so maybe we can remove this source let's say i want to download it download a different image maybe let's try a different image mm. okay this one let me download this image Yes, save image as okay. Patient food looking downwards. Okay, all right. So now I want to bring the image into our folder. Okay. okay, and just drag and drop here. Okay. All right. A folder itself. Okay, this is a folder actually. I opened the folder to Visual Studio Code, and inside this folder we have three files now. Yeah, a file and one picture. Okay, so I want to access to this image. So you can put dot slash and version flu dot jpg. So now let's see. See, we already have this image. Okay, this is how we import. What if I create a separate, a new folder? Maybe I put it as assets. Then I put this image inside this asset. Sorry, I need to delete this. Create folder. This is creating folder. Okay, assets. Okay, then I put the Uh, we have the picture inside this asset folder so do you think this url will work let's see see it's not working all right so how to access this image 
very easily. So dot slash dot slash means you are coming out this file. So if you come out this file, then you can access to this second page and assets, right? So that is why you can see all the submissions here. So now you want to get into this folder. So I said slash, then you want to get this version. So see, we got it. All right. So that is how you get image. So in the final one is comments. So I think I already explained about the comments, right? Comments not displayed in the browser, but they can help document your HTML codes like the notes. Okay. So any questions guys so far? Any questions so far? Any doubts so far? Any questions? All right. Let me have some poll. Is it possible to have poll you? Okay. How many elements we learned today? Three, six. How many elements we learned today? Come on, how many elements we learned today? You can use this poll to answer. Come on, guys. Check your chat. I've posted a poll. Okay, how many elements we learned today? Okay. All right. The first element that we learn today is is what? Okay. Ignore about the HTML structure, which is the doc type, HTML, head body. You can just ignore that. The elements that we learn that we use inside the body. First one is header, right? Either, yes, the H tag. Okay, the second one is we learned about P tag, paragraph tag. Then we learned about break line. After that, we learned about uh, paragraph break line. Then we learned about division. Okay. And we learned about common. Right. So how to write common? Okay, we learned about common. And we learned about uh, after at least ordered and unordered list. Yes, fantastic. We learned about uh, attribute tag which is uh, for links and learn about image tag okay even in list we have ordered and ordered then we learn about uh, images okay so i think about we learn about nine tags today all right so this is your beginning right in the first time html class so you have already learned nine tags this is the most common element Okay, common text that you're using web development, right? You can explore more text through, you can use maybe W3 schools. There's a lot more websites that you can uh, go through and learn about these elements, all right? 
So today I've already learned HTML tags. So in the next class, we'll learn about CSS. Okay, for CSS, I did not like uh, showing you one by one like today because for today I had to introduce to you some text that's why I, I went one by one but next class we'll be doing a project while doing the project we'll be learning the CSS so I think maybe we'll be doing like a tribute page okay a portfolio something like that right so do that you'll understand how to use HTML and CSS together at the same time you'll also learn CSS basics okay so if you have any questions, you can uh, ask me now. Or else, uh, in uh, one or two minutes, we can end our work class today. Okay, class. So, it looks like uh, nobody has any questions. Okay, so I'd like to end the class here today. Thank you so much for your time and for joining the class. Hope everyone can join the CSS class, I mean the next class, okay? If possible, uh, try to uh, uh, use your laptop when uh, joining this class because you can also try to do like what I'm doing, okay? So that you can understand better. Even if you have any question, you can immediately ask me, all right? So thank you so much class. So let's uh, let me pass to Sue.